Jet introduced already how this panel got together because there was a little Twitter thingy going on. There. And yes, this one. <laughs> um, and it was in reference to the talk that Jet just gave about his uh, little, yeah, we we'll could call it abstraction layer, <laughs> uh, called Tomo, where he essentially got rid of HTML and CSS and replaced it with JavaScript. And I let Divya go from here and take it over. Please give me a big round of applause for all those five people. So as uh, Thomas has been explaining, uh, so you can see that uh, Alex has strong views on what Domo should be or not. And uh, so we thought we'd have like a little duel. And uh, you have Jed and Alex on one side, and we have Seconds with Angus uh, hoping to be supportive of Jed, and then uh, Tim's going to be supportive of Alex. And um, I want to start with, uh, well, maybe uh, explaining why I wanted to be a moderator for this is because uh, I have been uh, talking to a lot of people who have crossed over to HTML from C++ world and native coding from Java and so on. And uh, when they come, when they start learning HTML, so CSS, and JavaScript, they exactly tell me the same problem that Jed just explained in his talk, which is that there are three different languages, and they are very different. And it's not, uh, it's it's not like you know, uh, apply the same kind of thinking that you have for debugging CSS to debug JavaScript, or if you have something in your HTML, how to uh, you know work with that. So. Um, and I, that's why I think I sympathize. I really do sympathize with Jed's view and why he's doing this, because that seems like something that people want. And I know a lot of people who have crossed over to the HTML5 world and gone back because they don't think they are capable of learning and understanding uh, deeply enough uh, all these different technologies so that they can actually make an effective HTML5 app. Anyway, so uh, going forward, I think uh, maybe uh, I want to start with Alex to explain his tweet. <laughs> so uh, I don't think I've ever regretted a tweet more. <laughs> 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 I've uh, now been put in front of all these people uh, just for a tweet. <laughs> um, so th this tweet was very helpful, and I'm sorry about that. But I do think that Domo is a, a bad idea. Um, and I want to go into a, f a few reasons for that. Um, so basically, CSS and HTML and JavaScript were invented uh, as C three separate things to actually uh, basically be sep three separate things. They're basically um, uh, invented to decouple your, your, your view layer and your presentation layer and your styling. Uh, that, that's their job. And, um, and by combining the three, you're not doing anyone any favors. And I, and I just say this because I've been down this rabbit hole before. Uh, I've I've absolutely, I, I made this, this framework called super.js. Uh, at Twitter, we had big battles uh, with, between using mustache.js and this DOM builder uh, called builder.js. Um, and so I've definitely been that, down this rabbit hole before, and I've been on both sides of the argument. But the end conclusion I've come to is that um, I like HTML, you know? And I like CSS a lot. And uh, and I like and don't get me wrong I like abstractions I like CoffeeScript I like Stylus, um, but for me this just goes too far. Okay, uh, Tim, do you want to say anything? Uh, have you come across a need for this? S excuse me, Anna. There we go. I just wanted to say about some of the things there. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I agree. No, I agree generally with what what uh, Alex was saying. Um, but you know, when it comes to things like even CoffeeScript. And uh, and stylus and SAS, I think that's even going too far. So well, I think I think we've actually got a pretty good uh, the alignment here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do I need to elaborate? Uh, well, what what would you do then? You just write. Oh no, well, basically, you know, at at the end of the day, you're you're always going to be dealing with CSS and HTML. Uh, you know, why keep like filling it up, filling your application up with other stuff which isn't HTML and CSS, which uh, is going to restrict the number of people who are going to understand this thing. You know, you need to get uh, developer uh, uh, developer investment in whatever technology it is. Now, it shouldn't be particularly difficult to pick up something like SAS or Haml, but um, people still, yeah, there's there's a learning curve, and uh, why not just have people, you know, focusing on the core web technologies and getting good at them rather than this all these abstraction layers above that. 
Maybe Jed, you want to say something for that? Um, yeah, so to me, this is actually less of an abstraction layer um, because it doesn't introduce any new syntax, really, to me. Uh, if you are Assuming you already know JavaScript, of course, that's obviously a big assumption. But, uh, I mean, look at some of these frameworks. Look at, I mean, there are, there are just so many template engines, uh, and they all have different symbols that do different things, and they all have logic in them. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's inevitable. Um, that's what templates are for. Um, but to me, the abstraction going across syntax from HTML to CSS or from, I'm sorry, HTML to JavaScript or CSS to JavaScript is less than introducing all these magical symbols that invoke different things in different places. So to me, it actually is less of an abstraction. You have a function, it takes three things, those are the same three things that you would put in the HTML in the first place. So um, I actually find it, it it's, it's a bigger abstraction in that you're bringing it into a different language, but once you do that, the abstraction is actually a lot less. That's good. I also was talking to Irene and uh, Angus during the break, and uh, we were like, yes, that's why Angus is here, actually. He was not supposed to be here, but anyway. Uh, what was interesting was that uh, talking about how CoffeeScript was also like ridiculed as a bad idea in the beginning, and it was like uh, people thought it was a joke, but then uh, people started using it, and now you see JavaScript adopting uh, some of the CoffeeScript principles, like the fat arrow and so on. And uh, so uh, maybe it's, it's just a matter of time. And some people say, oh, CoffeeScript has been existing for so long. And I'm like, well, Doma's just started. So maybe, I, well, it could be just a matter of time or something. But yeah. do you want to add anything, Angus? Yeah. Um, well, talking about abstraction layers, and I know you said it's not an abstraction layer, but it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> it definitely is. It so it less I know. So there's one abstraction layer here. So anyone who has an iPhone or any other phone that hasn't got a keyboard, an actual physical keyboard, so remember when the iPhone came out, there was always a separation of concerns before that. There was always a physical keyboard, and then there was always the, the screen, the display on the screen. And people laughed at Apple. They said, you'll never do this. This is a keyboard. It's a separate thing. They abstracted that keyboard. They made it part of the screen. And now anyone who has a smartphone that doesn't have a manual, that, 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 that has a manual keyboard, people think it's like crazy. So, Put HTML or CSS in the place of the physical keyboard. Not saying it's going to happen, but potentially. Uh, Anything to yeah. rebut? Uh, no, uh, have you ever used RJS? Uh, RJS is part of Rails. What? So this was like, I don't know if any of you remember this, but Rails used to have the system called RJS. Um, and it was stood for Ruby JavaScript. And this was maybe a few years ago. And the, the premise was that Ruby developers didn't want to write JavaScript. Um, and so they wrote some, basically a Ruby library that would generate JavaScript. And after a while, they decided this was a terrible idea, and they ripped it out of Rails. Uh, and basically, you're trying to abstract something away, uh, which works for something that's very simple. But as soon as you get anything complicated, then the abstraction quickly falls through. And I just want to talk about uh, the HTML templates just to focus on, on, on them. And uh, honestly, I don't find um, the templating engines out there to be that bad, the JavaScript ones. For example, I use Eco, and that's just CoffeeScript, and it actually produces strings. It's really fast. Uh, it's much, much faster than dealing with DOM objects. Like, if you benchmark the two, I'm, like, I have no idea that, it, you know, there would be no comparison. Uh, and that does matter uh, if you're building um, a large web app. Um, and I would love to see a, a really complicated web app built in this um, because it would be interesting to see whether it could actually scale up. Well, yeah, I think something important to remember is, <clears throat> totally agree, uh, if you're doing old IE, this DOMA is going to be much slower. Uh, when I say much, I, I don't really know how much. Uh, I know that when I benchmark it one, benchmarked it once against uh, just uh, doing string stuff and concatenation, it was half the speed. Um, it's a concern, definitely. But don't forget, the thing that shims the document that's on the server, that comes to the server side of Domo, why don't you just put that in the browser? Okay, well, that's only 800 bytes. Okay, so you lose 800 bytes, and then you never actually touch the DOM. You can actually use that thing to generate HTML and then write that to your DOM. Does that make sense? So, I mean, it's not, there's, I mean, Domo can be smarter about when it uses HTML and when it writes to the DOM. Uh, that's just something that needs to be built on top of it, I think. Okay, so what are you going to do when, like, when you're, you're done with this project, what happens to all the, the, the Domo code? I mean, are you saying that you know, I'm going to live with this thing? This is, this is your baby now. You're, you're asking people to you know, invest their, you know, build their apps on this, invest money, invest time. 
Uh, you know, now if if you you know just get sick of it and decide you want to write Ember code for whatever reason, uh, you know, <laughs> what, what what happens to all these developers? How is that? How is this any different than any other open source project? They no, all no, no. So basically, you, you're because everybody's um, projects are like, uh, you know, not only is, is there um, you know, their JavaScript, their CSS, and their HTML are all chucked into this thing. Uh, you know, you, you, if you had just like CSS or you were using a JavaScript library, at least only the, uh, if you're using Ember, for example, uh, at least the only people who have to experience the pain of changing framework are your Ember developers. Um, you know, the CSS developers can sort of still live with CSS. They've still got CSS, but in your case, everybody's screwed. But, but I think as, as Jed was saying, the syntax is almost, I mean, the syntax is different, but the, the learning curve is almost the same. I yeah. mean, but I mean, are we, are we talking about hiring people that have never worked in web before? Just get them off the street. Hey, guys, well, I've got a web app. Come, come work. Yeah. But that's what's but happening, actually. There is a lot of people from C++ and Java world trying to do HTML now. And I think that's the audience that we're trying to reach, at least. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the, uh, what is, like, for example, let's say you, you fall in love with CoffeeScript. Happens to a lot of people. You <laughs> fall in love with CoffeeScript, and then they get a massive hangover, and they're like, oh, I wrote all that stuff in CoffeeScript. What's your exit path? Okay, well, you compile it, and now you have JavaScript. But it's not the it. same. It's not the same. It's not the same. You can clean it up if you want to. It's the same thing. You write it in this, and if, if you're, you decide this is not for you anymore, just render the CSS and then bring it into whatever tool you do. I, I, I assure you that's no harder than uh, changing template engines. So hang on. So like something like SAS, this is something which I, I really like the idea of SAS, and I really like the idea of Compass. But uh, if you've ever had... Maybe uh, you want to explain what SAS and Compass Also, SAS and Compass are... Um, CSS compilers, um, well, well, SAS is a CSS, uh, it's, it's like a language which compiles to CSS. Um, and it allows you to do um, cool stuff like you'll write a selector and have a curly brace or not. Uh, and then you can have another selector inside it. And when it rewrites the code, it'll rewrite it as like selector space selector. So it allows you to like um, create kind of cool, um, you know, nested stuff without having to continually rewrite, you know, selector, 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 selector. You just indent it. Anyway, uh, I like the idea of these things because you know, like they really enhance the functionality of style sheets. Like things like mix-ins. Mix-ins are awesome, but unfortunately, when you actually compile it down to CSS, it becomes completely unusable because that's not how you would write CSS. You know, you end up with all this duplicate code. If if I was writing um, CSS instead of SAS, I would write a class um, which did X instead of having a mix-in which does X. If you've got a mix-in that does X, what it does is it copies that X code into this new selector. Um, so you end up with this repeated code everywhere, which is cool. That's fine if you are like, totally into SAS. But if you need to move away from that for whatever reason, um, like for example, you move from Rails to .NET, why? But you might. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you're, you're in trouble because the, you know, so now your, your CSS is like tied to this uh, SAS build process. But, but I, don't think that, I don't think that's a fair comparison because um, from what I've seen, um, the attributes you use in Domo CSS are exactly the same. There's no, the, the transformation from, SAS, from some of the more SAS, complex SAS idioms to CSS is way more complicated. Another thing is, I think you're going to have much more luck uh, pulling, if you, so let, let's say you use Domo and you regret it and you're like, ah, um, now you're porting JavaScript to another language, right? You're not porting some Franken language that has no spec uh, to another language. You're just porting JavaScript, which I think is a much w more well-defined problem. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I would much rather, even if you had to build a tool that like parses the AST, which is super easy, those exist, um, parse the AST and transform it, uh, good luck doing that with SAS. Um, because basically SAS, what the problem is, when your target is text, when your target is not a structure, uh, I think you have a much harder time actually reworking that. Because at the end of the day, JavaScript can just be turned into a giant JSON object, the AST, and you can traverse and transform that. I think you're probably uh, much more likely to be able to find a way out than you would with, uh, with regular SAS. Uh, 
Also, another thing I want to mention is that with, uh, with uh, SAS and LESS, uh, there's all sorts of really handy functions. Uh, uh, there's math stuff, which is like pretty ordinary, but there's like you can darken colors and saturate and lighten all these things. Um, but the thing is, you don't get to decide what you get to do. They do. And if you want to change it, you have to have a pull request. Uh, it, with Stylus, you yes, can yes. You write whatever you want. Oh, so you can write your own yeah. Yeah. In. in Stylus. So that's TJ's thing. Sorry to keep talking about TJ. <laughs> <laughs> But it, basically, he, he did the, um, the, the SAS uh, thing for Node, and when he was uh, re-implementing it, he was all like, hey, I could do this better. Same thing with Jade and Hamill. And, uh, and 100 realized, other components. Oh, pardon? 100 other projects that he has on GitHub for Node. Yeah, so this is for Node. Yes. Um, and uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the, these things allow you to, like, uh, th this is the, the best thing about, like, uh, stylus and stuff is that, when, you, when you're trying to do some kind of mix-in, it's completely transparent. So it uh, allows you to do something like uh, border radius, you know, whatever, and when uh, Stylus compiles it, it compiles it to all of the garbage, you know, browser, extent, you know, browser prefix stuff. Um, so ideally, at the end of the day, uh, if you're using uh, Stylus in its um, CSS version, so like the curly brackets and the semicolons are option optional in Stylus, um, what you can do is hopefully one day you can just take your Stylus and drop it in and get rid of the Stylus compiler altogether and you, you won't, um, there'll be no difference because all of your mix-ins and stuff uh, should be just the, the browser, um, you know, the, the standard browser stuff. Yep. So. Uh, I got a question for you. Um, are these files gonna uh, like your CSS and your HTML, i.e., your like uh, JavaScript generated HTML? Are these gonna be in like different files, or do you put everything in one thing? That's completely up to you. Uh, for me, I find the most mat natural curve is start with one file, and then when it gets unwieldy, refactor it. Uh, and the fact that the refactoring isn't actually enforced on you until you need it. Uh, it takes self-restraint. You know, if, you, if you're a crap developer uh, and you write all this thing in one giant file and it's completely unmaintainable, I can't save you. I mean, that's, it's your, I'm giving you rope to hang yourself. So you definitely have fewer options uh, in terms of there's no actual separation of, of concerns that's forced upon you. But uh, I actually find that much more natural. If you, if you actually refactor your code, like I was talking with Backbone, when you have a view and you just write it in line now, and then eventually you can factor it out to like a views folder if you want. Um, and then the, the actual building of that is just, you can just use CommonJS, right? So everything is just a CommonJS reference. Um, other thing, one thing to keep in mind is that I am not trying to build something that competes with uh, web apps, like client-side web apps as we know them necessarily. I am thinking of, we need, compete, we need to compete with native platforms. Does that make sense? And so I think this makes it uh, building an app in JavaScript much more like building an app on a native platform uh, because you're dealing with one language across the whole thing uh, and you might not even have a server. Uh, and so I think uh, in, in terms of that, for the use case of like a straight up Rails type web app, sure, it might not make sense. But once you get more and more device specific and like actually you're putting code and all that stuff on device, that's to me where the big win is. Mm. But I also think that there's, uh, uh, the new move towards all these uh, smaller modular uh, things and then... What? <laughs> Components. Components, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I, and I feel like when you have small modules, it just becomes unwieldy to have a HTML, CSS uh, script all for one comp component and then... Uh, 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 because or you would have them separately, and then it becomes a large file, large JavaScript file, a large CSS file, large uh, markup file. So maybe if you split it like with the Domo, you, you can just have them like within one element, and then it's all within. You don't separate them into separate files, so you don't have to find different areas to debug, I don't know. It's, well, it, I think it's much more composable, right? Anytime you have Domo, it returns a DOM node. So you can call Domo and you can have the arguments of Domo function other Domo objects. So like it's trivially easy to compose, whereas with templates, you have to compile it and so it needs mm -hmm. a context. So yeah. all that context of the closure of where that thing is, is lost when you compile a template, right? Yeah. Because templates can only refer to the global scope, right? That's mm -hmm. one of the big problems with templates, right? That's, so that's not true at all. I don't understand that at all. No. Uh, when you call new function on a string, that string does not have any access to the closure in which that thing is called. Uh, you don't actually have to, uh, first of all, you do pass in the context, right? And also, you, that is not the only way of making templates. If you have a look at uh, the way Eco does templates, uh, uh, it uses strings, it doesn't use a new function. 
Um, but you don't have to, you, you, you can pass in your own context. Like, otherwise, how would you interpolate variables? So you, okay, so now you're passing a variable to your, your, your basically, then you're starting to write a template to compile templates. You're saying that the, so at the end of the day, if you want to create a JavaScript function that you can reuse more than once, you need the function constructor. Is that true or not? Uh, all of these frameworks, all of the, the underscore, and they all do that. They all use the function constructor, as far as I know. Uh, no, AK doesn't. Okay, well, that's... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, the, especially with the, when you look at the Chrome package oh. apps and see that they're actually deprecating the function, function constructor, I think anything that is built on top of that is shaky ground, uh, in right. my opinion. But yeah. Uh, I think we have two minutes. Uh, so is there any question that you guys have for this panel? Maybe we can close off with that. Anyone is welcome to ask questions. This question is kind of a jet. Um, so I might have missed the entire point, to be honest. But uh, from what I got from your presentation, the people you really want to help the most with Domo is people who have trouble having to handle three different languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? So I don't understand how it really helps us because the syntax, it's so similar to HTML and CSS already. You need to understand HTML and CSS to actually use Domo. So how does that help? Right, so you people? need to understand HTML and CSS. Those things yeah. are both very well defined. Right. Whereas these other template engines aren't necessarily. Okay. They don't necessarily have a spec. They have all these magical symbols that do things, then you actually have to look in the manual and find out what that does. Whereas if you're just actually inlining the same structure, like there's a string, there's a map, and there's a list. But isn't that HTML. the same thing that you've got with yeah. Domo? Yeah. Like it's exactly the same thing. You yeah. need to go look at, you know, look at the, the, the Domo library and... Yes, it's just a much smaller API because it borrows much more from the things that it uh, is built upon. That's all. Um, but yeah, it's not for people who have trouble with it. Like, I, I, I don't have trouble with it. Like, I can perf build a perfectly fine app using all of these uh, other templates. I do it all the time. I do it for work. Um, but what I'm saying is I don't like context switching. I feel like when I'm in one context, I'm much more efficient. Um, but maybe that's a personal thing. <laughs> so let me just talk a little bit. Uh, we have to close soon. I know, so I know, I know, it'll be quick. It'll be quick. Yeah, so okay, basically, that's half a minute. Half a minute. So basically, that's exactly the reason why I don't like CoffeeScript is the co the context switching stuff. And um, I, I think that what what's going to end up happening with with uh, you know Domo stuff is that at the end of the day, like when I go when I open up a <coughs> a browser and I want to edit something in my console, how am I going to do that? I don't have like I've got to use the you know. Firebug or Chrome Inspector tools, I uh, need to do that context switch anyway. Well, you could use source maps or something. Source yeah. maps, but it's not quite the same. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Anyways. Okay, thank you guys for being here and uh, arguing in public. So thank you for the whole panel. Thank you, yeah. Tiffia, for moderating. I mean, that was totally worth it. That was really, really cool.